Welcome to the 24 hour readathon. I'm going to be seeing how many books I can read in 24 hours. I'm going to be reading for the whole day along with one of my best friends, Carolyn from Carolyn Mary Reads. You should definitely check out her channel because what's going to be happening is that I'm going to be reading three books that Carolyn, for sure, three books that she has loved and that she's recommended to me and vice versa. So in like 20 minutes, I think I have 20 minutes until we start, we're starting at two. So it's going to go from 2 p.m. to 2 p.m. tomorrow, Friday to Saturday. Um, I'm just going to be reading. We have 20 minutes to set up a reading space, get snacks, drinks, everything, and then just start reading. I'm so excited. This is my first 24 hour readathon ever, so welcome. Carolyn and I just had our live show for Tolstoy, a couple of his short stories for the Dickens versus Tolstoy, so I just changed into something a lot more comfortable. And now I'm gonna get all my books and call her. We have the one, the only, Carolyn Mary reads. She cannot be here in person, but maybe one day. So I've already told them that you essentially have picked some, not like your all-time favorite books, but books that you really, really love for me to read. Um, I don't know, do you want to introduce the first one I'm reading? Because I know you're obsessed. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what to say about it. Um, so I am forcing Emma to read Heartstopper, the graphic novel series. Yes. Um, because I read it for the first time in 2020, and then it recently, two weeks ago, came out as a Netflix show, and I have been thoroughly obsessing over it for the past two weeks, and also since 2020 when I read it the first time, and Emma has yet to read it or watch the show, so this is my way of forcing her. I'm gonna start with that one. I'm gonna read it on Webtoon because I didn't buy a physical copy of it. I think the second one I'm gonna read is this one. <gasps> Upstream by It's Upstream Mary by Mary Oliver. Um, I've never read Mary Oliver. What do I expect? I don't know. Um, expect expect a lot of nature a okay. lot of um a lot of peacefulness i mm. think she is so great at capturing a feeling of calm in her writing yeah and there's one part when i when i found the book at the bookshop i read the back of it and it talks about how um she always felt like she had a friend and walked with her. oh my gosh and there's there's a section of the book where that, that's basically what she's discussing and <gasps> oh. and i you know walt whitman's my favorite my favorite poet he's he's right there behind me um, <laughs> and so i do feel such a connection between me and her and her connection with um between her and walt whitman so it's kind of this um, circle. This friendship, this yeah. friendship circle, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I just flipped to a page and I saw Canada Goose. There you go. <gasps> Hugo Capri. It's the invention of Hugo Capri by Brian Selznick. So I first read that book when I was nine years old. It was the book that really made me want to become an illustrator and a writer. And I just graduated actually a whole year ago, uh, this month. Um, with an illustration degree. So that book really changed my life in so many ways. And Emma has watched the movie. And yes, the movie that has never love the, the movie. That needs to change. change. So. It does. I've watched it so many times. Like I'm obsessed with this film. I didn't, it's not half and half, right? It's just intermittently. Yes, yes. Illustrated. I'm scared that I'm gonna really offend you by not liking the illustration style. Wait, do you not? No, I don't know. I haven't made up my mind yet. I'm just saying. Oh, like, maybe okay. I might not, okay. you know? Um, I will not be offended because I can drive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start now, and I guess I'll see you guys when I actually have something decent to say. But we're gonna be reading for 24 hours. We're trying to. For 24 hours. I like his hair. <laughs> Uh, the guy with the dark hair? Charlie. Charlie. Oh my god, they just met. Mmm, Nick is kind of ugly. <laughs> Stop! You don't say that! Why am I giving you live updates? I need to calm down. <laughs> yeah, you need to shut up so I can say How much? Did you know I played rugby in high school? No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. Oh my god. 
This is taking me back. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. <laughs> Tell me what you're annotating. Absolutely. It says, the mole was bewitched, entranced, and fascinated. By the side of the river he trotted as one trots, when very small, by the side of a man who holds one spellbound by exciting stories. And when he tried at last, he sat on the bank, while the river still chattered on to him, a babbling procession of the best stories in the world, sent from the heart of the earth to be told at last to the insatiable sea. I love that, like the, the comparison between like a running brook and telling stories. It doesn't aren't, like aren't you feeling all of the feelings? I am <laughs> feeling the feelings. <laughs> I'm not breathing, I'm not breathing. No, no, Nick, no. Come on, bro. Oh, man. No, that's not how it ends. That's how it ends. That's why you're gonna wanna read volume two. I finished Heartstopper. Thoughts, let me give you my thoughts. It is now 3.30, so we are an hour into the readathon and I finished, why are you freaking staring at me, man? We've got down Heartstopper volume one. That was really short. I flew through it, reading it on Webtoon. I really liked it. I was kind of like not expecting to like it just because sweet and like soft and fluffy. Okay, but I did really like it. I think it was really well done. It like captured a lot of things really well. And overall, it just, I think I was just smiling the whole time. You were like staring at me. Yeah? I read about 10 pages of The Wind and the All right, Carolyn's 10 pages in. <laughs> okay, I think I gave it four stars. Definitely gave it four stars. I do want to continue. Carolyn is actually holding me at gunpoint to continue. So she I have to continue. I, I am picking your TBR. You are reading volume two. You have no choice. I'm so glad you made me read that. I love it. I think like just for right now, I'm going to switch it up and start reading Upstream by Mary Oliver. Thank you so much to Audible for sponsoring today's video. Jesus, Susan Catherine. Mom, we have to leave for your game in 10 minutes. What would you like? Can you please not bring a book with you this time no. in my match? Susie, there's no book in my purse. I promise I will be paying my utmost attention. Last time you didn't look at me once, you just stared down at your stupid what? book. Do you even know what position I am? Running? Ball kicker? Middle. Middle field. Why don't you want to watch five-year-olds with no motor skills? No books, just snacks, okay? Fine. Are you tired of talking to people? Try having Audible in your ears instead. And instead of listening to your colleagues' worthless and tasteless dinner party stories, you can spend your time listening to your next favorite book. Hi, you must be Jared, right? Yo, what up? My name's Jared. Okay. <laughs> Are these for me? <laughs> no, my ex-girlfriend makes me buy her tulips every Tuesday. Oh, amazing. I see they haven't served wine yet. I wanted to actually get your recommendation. No, I already have five glasses. They said I couldn't have any more. Can you talk to them for me? That's ridiculous. Like, I'm the customer. Why don't you tell me a little bit about where you work? What do you do? I'm in between jobs right now, but I've been cooking something up in my uh, garage, if you know what I'm saying. I'm hoping to make a couple bucks off of that. No, don't go any further. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. All right, all right. We'll keep it on the down low. We'll keep it on the down low. You want to be my first customer? No, yeah. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment, boasting thousands of titles that will keep you as entertained or distracted as you need to be to get through your daily life. Can you read? Do you read? The Da Vinci Code changed my life. You can listen offline anytime. Finally, some peace and quiet. What is shaking over here? You're all alone back here. It's a corporate party. We're supposed to be having fun. Just listening. Raymond Parker, DBT Financials. Nothing like corporate parties. Ah, no, just a carrot smoothie for me. Gotta keep those vitamins as high as the stock prices, am I right? Throughout this readathon, I've been listening to Poison for Breakfast by Lemony Snicket. It is a book of mystery and philosophy. You know, and I think I might have some uh, 
synergistic management opportunities you might be interested in. It's all about the flow. We're talking a little bit above minimum wage, no benefits, uh, no vacation time, like- Oh my god. Right? I did not see that coming. I actually make this juice myself. You know what, Raymond? I'll, uh, I'll circle back to you on this one, okay? I'll loop around. Yeah, I think it's gonna be the next big thing. Oh my god, download book two, download book two. Audible offers a 30-day free trial, which you can access by going to audible.com slash emmy. That's audible.com slash emmy. Or feel free to text emmy to 500-500 to start your free trial today. I was steadfast about one or two things, um, mostly the shimmering shoulders of the world that shrug carelessly over the fate of any individual that they may, and that I did not give, give to anyone the responsibility for my life. It is mine. I made it and can do what I want to with it. Live it. Give it back someday without bitterness to the wild and weedy dunes. Mary Oliver. I, what I love is that I feel like we do really know each other, like even though we have like semi-different reading tastes, I feel like we both do know what the other one will like. She's like, oh, I'm devoted to nature, I pay attention, I worship nature, I love animals and stuff. But then she goes fishing for fun. Mary? Mary Oliver? <laughs> make it make sense. I was with you until you went fishing. She was like, I respect, like that's my life's goal is to respect nature. I made judicious use of their sweet and snowy bodies. But then also she literally just drank cat milk from the cat. <laughs> it was really weird. Okay, so we are now, I think, on hour three. We're like two hours into the readathon. Um, I think I'm greatly underestimating my ability to read for this long. But like I said, I already finished Heartstopper and then I did pick up Upstream. So I'm currently 49 pages through Upstream, which isn't too bad. Um, right now I'm a little like not hesitant about it because I am really liking it. It's all about Mary Oliver's relationship with nature, which is really nice. But as I was saying, like, it does just strike me as a little bit odd, almost blind, because she is constantly saying how much she adores and, you know, is devoted to nature and respects it. But then she starts describing like all the ways that we butcher fish and how she really wants to eat fish. And now she's saving, and now she's saying, for some years now, I've eaten almost no meat, though occasionally I crave it. And it's like, okay, but it's not just eating meat that creates harm and hurts animals and more than that hurts the world so it just seems like a little i don't know just a little discordant but there have been some really beautiful lines and i've almost cried at a few
Hello, I'm checking in with you. It's now 7.15. I took a break to eat dinner and stuff like that, but I did start an audiobook that I listened to a little bit. I, I don't know why, I'm already so tired. Like I'm just exhausted. It's only 7.15 and obviously I'm gonna try to stay up really late and read. Um, but yeah, anyway, so updates. I finished Heartstopper, like I said, and then now I am 126 pages through Upstream. So I'm gonna finish this quite soon. I think I only have like 50 more pages, but the thing that I was talking about that I do have kind of just an issue with, I don't think overall Mary Oliver is the poet for me, even if I didn't find such huge contradictions in this work and just philosophies that I don't agree with. I just don't find her voice to be, you know, you know when a poet is speaking to you and she's not she's not speaking to me like i don't think mary oliver's poet for me which is so surprising because it looks like i mean look at this it looks like she is her whole collection and i think her whole worldview is about devotion being devotional to nature respecting nature she literally talks about the importance of treading carefully and lovingly upon the earth respecting everything knowing that everything is sentient knowing that everything is alive respecting it cherishing it but then the, it's just so discordant and i just don't know how she can reconcile these two things because i literally turned a page and there's a section there's a whole essay in here called sister turtle which is about a turtle um a female turtle who is laying her eggs um, in the spring and she details all of the obviously really hard work that this turtle does and everything that she has to go through But then a few days later in the middle of the night Mary Oliver the speaker of this essay I don't know how personal these are to her But she digs up this mother turtle's eggs takes half of them covers the rest of them and then goes home and has scrambled eggs out of this turtle's children and it's just so bizarre and i'm just like what are you doing i think she reconciles us because her whole theory is that we can't eat without creating suffering but i think that's a really lazy view like i think that is such a lazy view um and i do not agree with its unavoidable attachments to suffering humanity's necessity for food anyway so we've kind of gotten out of the nature ones and now we're into her essays on american writers like poe emerson whitman um which is interesting i think now i'm reading one about wordsworth it's just not terribly connecting to me in any way shape or form so i am going to be glad to finish this and like i just want to fall asleep right now um and i don't know if reading mary oliver is really the way to go for that but i think after i finish this one carolyn has been screaming at me to start volume two of heartstopper which i might do because i just i just flew through the first one so quickly it's so fast so easy to read and i have it on webtoon as well obviously and then after that I think I'll pick up Hugo. This looks very long, but a lot of this is, most of it is illustrated too. So. And then I do have a bunch of options on my shelf that I wanted to go through with you guys. Some of them are very short books that are perfect for a 24 hour readathon. Like, look at how teeny these ones are. These three I've just not picked up because I'm like, they're so small. Why would I pick them up? But I'm like, oh, I just read them. Um, so the first one is Poems Tonight by Rilke. And then we have Here the World Entire, which is a Medusa retelling. And then this little one is Eric by Shantan. I really want to get to Mirabai's poetry. I also have this really teeny short play by Anne Carson that I've had for a while and I just think I could get through this. I put my pajamas on, which is maybe not the best idea. I only ever wear the one. Do you as well? Give me updates on um, Wind in the Willows. Toad has gone completely insane. Toad is, is unhinged. He dressed up as a washerwoman. <laughs> yet another car. It's just Grand Theft Auto. Wind in the Willows yeah. is just Grand Theft Auto. This guy. Criminal. Criminal Minds. Don't oh. get Toad on Criminal Minds. I started an audiobook aside from Graceling that I thought Carolyn would like because you like Lemony Snicket. <gasps> so I started his new one called Poison for Breakfast. Ooh, I haven't read that one yet. And it's only three hours long, so I think I can finish it during the readathon. Amazing. Who narrates it? It's the guy from the show. Wait, no Patrick Harris? What? No. <laughs> I, yes, I went on a walk in the rain. Any no. signs of the mystery man? Don't put this in your video. Don't put this in your video. <laughs> okay, tell me. Okay, so I finished Upstream. We're just gonna kind of ignore it because I already told you basically all of my thoughts. 
and I'm starting Heartstopper Volume 2. Yay! And I'm already like a decent way into it. Episode 14. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Carolyn just finished. Where did she go? There you are. Um, The Wind in the Willows. <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. I think my favorite character has to be Toad. Oh he is just so crazy and hilarious and wild. And I was saying to Emma that it really reminded me a lot of what she loves about Dickens and what I also love about Dickens. Yeah. It's just, it's just a wild frenzy, uh, but in the best way and how he makes the ordinary extraordinary and just, I don't know, he, he's just so entertaining and it was, it was a wild time and I loved it. After many years have passed, I have nothing left out of that beautiful dream except painful memories flapping like invisible wings around me, filling the depth of my heart with sorrow and bringing tears to my eyes. My beloved, beautiful Selma is dead and nothing is left to commemorate her except my broken heart and tomb surrounded by cypress trees. That tomb and this heart are all that is left to bear witness of Selma. Yeah, it's a tragic love story. I don't think I said that. I did know that, but I but page two of the forward, and we're already like. <laughs> I just loved it so much. Oh, don't you want to keep reading it? Yeah, but I don't want it to be over. Amazing. So <gasps> you you must what? There is a spider this big on my ceiling. Uh oh. Oh, he's okay. He can stay there. <laughs> Heart stop for a reason. I'm about to have a heart attack. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> so I finished Heart Stopper Volume Two. If you couldn't tell, um, <laughs> it's 9:30. How many books? Did I that I'm that was my third. And Carolyn has started The Broken Wings and is loving it. Yes, I am. <clears throat> it's like the opposite feelings of Heart Stopper, though. Yes. I am 13 pages in, but I have been half watching the time. Oh my god. I need a glass of water. I need some food. I need, need to like I need a hug. So it's now 11.22, I am <laughs> so tired. We're, we're sleepy. <laughs> I might make another quesadilla, honestly. Oh my god. But I just finished, we keep like finishing books at the same time. This is kind of strange. Yeah, yeah. Except yours is much longer now. I finished Hugo. I don't want to like block your face. There we go. I finished Hugo and I gave it four stars really enjoyed it although i have seen the movie before I've, I've i can't even speak anymore honestly i was obsessed with the movie and i think in the end like i do love the movie 
a lot more than the book. I just feel like it managed to capture some things more than the book. Oh, wow. I just think the movie is actually so excellent. But this was still really sweet, and there weren't too many changes, actually. Um, there were, like, barely any changes, which is cool. But I'm also very sad to say that I was not a fan of the art style. I'm so sorry. Like, what? how do you describe Brian Selznick's art? It's a shoot. What are you talking about? It's a shoot. No, no, no. I mean the, the method. The oh, style. Cross hatching. Cross hatching. Oh, see, I didn't even know cro the word cross hatching existed. I'm gonna go take all my makeup off. Me too. Okay, so Carolyn is being attacked by her own dog as we speak. <laughs> Willow, it's bedtime. But not for us because I have, we've moved to the bed, which is maybe not the best strategy. Um, we've got some acne cream going on, but I'm going to be starting Eric by Shantan, which is literally the tiniest little thing, but I just thought like, I finished the three books that Carolyn recommended me, but I'm still going to keep reading Heartstopper, I think. But I'm just going to take a little break and read just some, like, very tiny books that I've had on my shelf for forever, like I was telling you guys about. So, and I also brought a bag of <laughs> Clementines in the bed. Um, so yeah, well, I don't even know what time it is. It is, oh, it's almost midnight. Um, I don't have as much energy as Willow, but we're trying. <laughs> That's my thumb. <laughs> oh my god. My brain's about to explode. Good morning. I slept in a lot. I just fell asleep last night around one something. Um, Carolyn ended up being a huge champ and just kept reading after I was clocked out. Um, and I, I don't know how much she read or how late she stayed up because I'm gonna call her in a few minutes, but it's now 11.46 on Saturday. So we only have a few more hours of the readathon, but I have so many updates to put onto Goodreads and I actually just finished another book. I also finished Eric by Sean Tan last night, but it was literally the like smallest book I've ever read. So I really don't know what to rate it because like not that much happened. So I think I'll just go with, with a solid three stars. And then literally a few minutes ago, I just finished Poison for Breakfast by Lemony Snicket, which was just so bizarre. The most Lemony Snicket thing I've ever read. Um, so I think I'm gonna give it three stars as well. We're trying to pick Carolyn a very short book for our last two hours. And I just finished Ecstatic Poems. Oh my god. And that's my laundry machine. Okay. Carolyn and I are done. Yeah. The Tale of Mrs. Tittlemouse, which I think is a great name. <laughs> and it was so adorable. I just, these illustrations are the cutest things. Oh my God. Look at her. I love them. She's so sweet. Yeah, so I squeezed this in at the last second. And then I also read Man of La Mancha, which is the um, stage adaptation or the musical, one of my favorite musicals, Man of La Mancha, but I've never actually read it before. I've only watched it, so mm. oh, good. I think I finished eight. Okay, I guess we'll do this again sometime. I had so much fun. Absolutely. Okay, I will <laughs> sign off, leave you guys there. Thank you so much for watching. And I guess we'll see you in the next video. And I'll link Carolyn's video in the description too, so. Okay, ciao. Do you wanna say ciao? Yes, ciao! <laughs>